All right, today we're going to take a short video of this nice 2012 Hyundai Elantra Touring. It's only got 134,000 miles and it is in fairly excellent condition. And on a side note, I really kind of like these wheels. So anyway, here is the key fob. As you can see, you've got your lock and unlock button as well as the trunk popper and the panic is there on the back. This one's attached, I don't know if this was a, uh, a stock thing or a thing from the factory, but with this nice leather, I don't know what you call it, strap, whatever. I like that. So I'll show you the full walk around view of this car here. It's hard to believe, 2012, this car's seven years old. It sure doesn't look it. I think that, uh, at least for the seven years, this has held its appearance pretty well. Let's go ahead and start this by taking a look at the back. Oh, and I locked it. There we go. So, it's got one of the traditional uh, little popper buttons right there. It does have the cargo um, cargo protector, I don't know what you call these. It's basically so that uh, when you've got this out, nobody can peek in the windows and see what's, what your cargo is. You can kinda, sorry it's pretty dirty. I'm gonna be washing it either today or tomorrow, boy. Not much coming through, but anyway. So, there's that little security cargo, cargo cover thing. These are two front WeatherTech floor mats, and then it does have this nice little storage area that continues up in there a little bit, as well as these odd little, uh, little side pocket things. I think it's interesting that, um, that these were put in here. I mean, why not? If you've got extra space, why not use it? So there you've got a, uh, a rag and some gloves. As well as, if you didn't already notice, it's got these little tie-down hooks, which are a nice touch. If you have anything heavy or that you don't want moving around on your journey, let's go ahead and tie them down there. The seats in this are in fairly good condition. It does have the center armrest with cup holders there. Nice and well padded. And of course, these back seats do fold down. Power windows and everything in the back. Do have storage nets on the back of either seat. Standard headliner with dome light. However, this one does come equipped with a sunroof. I've got this driver's seat positioned where I would and I am a little over six feet tall. And yet I do still have an inch or two of knee room and enough leg room to sit comfortably. And my head does not touch the ceiling or the roof at all. Let's go ahead and move on to the front seat. So, again, fairly standard power windows, power door locks, and power mirrors as well. This does not have a power seat, but it does have plenty of uh, adjustable components with the seat. Getting in here where the driver would normally sit, this is uh, kind of the view that you would get here. Again, completely power sunroof. There are the controls right there. You do have uh, a top little storage bin there, as well as a full um, little storage cubby in the center console, as well as USB and auxiliary port plug-ins. Shift knob is fairly standard. There's no button, you just put your foot on the brake. It does have an ashtray, as well as additional storage right there. And this model, I believe, due to it having the leather seats, which again, these front seats are in excellent condition as well, uh, does have heated seats. The climate and stereo controls are very simple, well-labeled, and easy to understand. 
a reasonably good sized glove box with a little feature that I quite like. If you see that little thing back there that says AC, you can lift that up or close it. And what that is, is that's attached to the climate control vents. And let's say if you had a beverage on a hot day that you wanted to keep cooler, you could put it in your glove box here, lift this up, and as long as the AC in the car is running, that cold air is going to be blowing on uh, whatever it is you want to keep cold, which is um, kind of ingenious. I have not seen that on any other vehicle. Uh, it's a nice little touch that doesn't take much extra to do. The gauges, again, simple and easy to understand. Well labeled, and everything that you would need is right there. It does have a little center information screen as well. As you can so, or as you can see, it shows the range and the odometer. You can do average miles per gallon, average, uh, you've got a few options there that you can go through. I like to just leave it on range, so we'll go ahead and leave it there. Here on the steering wheel, I love that it actually has audio controls. Volume, you've got your presets or song controls and mode, which I'm assuming is uh, input or source, and that's exactly what it is. This stereo system does, of course, come equipped with uh, satellite option. On the steering wheel are also the cruise control controls. I quite like having the auto audio controls on the steering wheel. That way I'm not taking my hands and my attention away from the road. Over here you can see that the climate and audio controls are all very simple and easy to understand. These climate controls, of course, you have your fan setting, your hazard lights, and your temperature setting. You simply push that to engage the AC compressor, and your various vent settings are all independent buttons and well-labeled. I love that they're independent buttons because I do not like uh, the single button where you have to cycle through the various modes or, or settings to get the desired setting. Again, that's something to where you're going to be taking your attention away from the road for much longer than you need to than if they simply did something like this Hyundai has done. Looking above, you see the uh, radio controls are all well labeled again and easy to understand. Push for power is volume as well. You've got your tuner and uh, this is also the enter or select button if you've got uh, a certain you know thing pulled up on the display there. During uh, night driving situations, you can actually turn the display off. That does not turn the radio off, but it turns the display off so it's one less light that's shining into your eyes. And up above that, you've got this little extra storage component compartment there you can keep you know whatever insurance or registration information whatever you should choose and uh yeah i mean this interior is fairly simple well laid out and it works well you know i i definitely think that everything's well within the driver's reach and easy to understand it's a it's a fairly simple but well executed interior okay let's drive it First impression of the 2012 Hyundai Elantra Touring is that uh, that is a pretty cool car. All right, let's redo this. First impression of the 2012 Hyundai Elantra Touring, it's uh, the interior feels, how to put it, it feels uh, standard, I guess. You know, it's, it's a standard newer car interior, but nothing is out of reach everything's easy to understand you know the uh the climate controls once again everything is super easy to operate and understand in here the seat is pretty firm but it does cup the body pretty well so it's still comfortable and you would want a firmer seat for a a, a longer road trip anyway uh this little car it's got a four-cylinder engine you know it's going to get good fuel economy it's also not a very large car so you're going to be able to park it easy maneuver easy um you know, just uh, essentially it's going to be an easy car to drive. You know, it's not going to really have a learning curve or anything like that. It's it's something you can just get in and right away be used to it, you know. It's got more than enough power for itself, but uh, it's not fast. You know, transmission also does shift fairly smooth. I'm going to go ahead and change lanes here. Transmission shifts smooth. Let's go ahead and get it to downshift. Smooth downshift, I mean, smooth as butter as far as this goes. Steering feels very nimble. Um, 
I've been driving driving it mostly on straight roads, but I have had the chance to, uh, you know, I turned around in a parking lot and kind of whipped it around a little bit. And the steering's pretty nimble, but of course it is a smaller car, so you're going to get that feeling, that uh, light and nimble feeling with this kind of vehicle, at least this, uh, this kind of vehicle at this year, you know, a newer, smaller car is just naturally going to be a nimble and easier to maneuver vehicle. Um, I will say I am getting a good bit of road noise coming into the cabin. However, this is not by any means supposed to be a luxury car, so I have no problem with hearing a little bit of road noise. Now, vehicle steering and suspension components along with the brake system are the most important things when it comes to uh, safely driving. And this vehicle in particular has some fabulous brakes. This will stop on a dime with no problem. So overall, my impression of the 2012 Hyundai Elantra Touring is it's a relatively nice, affordable car. It's a great daily driver, nice and, uh, you know, a relatively smaller car. It's gonna be easier to maneuver, uh, whether it be on a parking lot or on the highway. And so, you know, this would make somebody a great daily driver. And with it being the Touring, and so it's got more of that wagon back there, you've got a lot more utility with this vehicle because you can store a lot more stuff in here. Or not so much store it, but uh, put a lot more stuff in the vehicle. 